All right, welcome back. Daily Graphic starts the morning. Uh, Parliament passes RTI bail. Uh, you, that's uh, a story that certainly will get a lot of attention this morning. Parliament approves uh, ministerial nominees. And then on the Daily Graphic, shortfall in police citizen ratio, ICT to the rescue, cameras deployed across the country. Daily Guide says AG declines NDK 1.2 billion cities and uh, Takrade kidnapper shaves babies uh, hair. Uh, Ghana, Malta sign five MOUs and uh, Parliament drops minister, approves 18. That's the Daily uh, Guide. The finder reinstate 23 new, UWE, uh, new EW uh, staff. Utah calls for investigations and resignation of Professor Afu Bruni. Uh, that's uh, here on the finder. And ban riding of motorbikes after 10 p.m. to reduce crime. That's the uh, transport industry, the transport uh, deputy transport minister making that suggestion there. Immigration border post in deplorable state. The finder has that story too. If you take a look at the Ghanaian Times this morning, aftermath of IMF program, we will maintain fiscal discipline, President promise, and the Okada story is here. VIP urges Ekuas uh, to support civil society organizations. And the Times has a story about uh, the police uh, deploying uh, investigations on the uh, pylons that fell or were made to fall uh, in Tema. So on page 15 of the Ganeta, we'll have uh, time to talk about all those stories. Grateful for your time. I guess we'll do the talking this morning. The National Communications Officer of the NDC, Sami Jeffy, is here. Sami, good morning. Good morning, Hope Bryce. you're doing great. My God's grace, what about you? Uh, I'm good too. Thanks okay. for joining us. Okay. And the Deputy Minister of Information, Paris uh, Hajide, is also here. Good morning, too. Good morning, Bryce. And thanks for joining us. Thanks for having me. Mm. Right. Now, certainly to start with the RTI bill, and uh, page, if you take a look <coughs> at page 19 of the Daily Graphic, uh, last night, uh, around, uh, let's say, 9, 10 p.m., Parliament uh, decided to pass the bill. After about two decades of waiting, uh, Parliament yesterday passed the Right to Information Bill. The Minister of Information, Mr. Kuyo Pankuma, moved the motion for third reading and seconded by the NDC Member of Parliament for Tamale Central and ranking member of the Constitutional, Legal and Parliamentary Affairs Committee, Alhaji Inusa Fuseni. Uh, the law provides for operationalization of the constitutional right to information held by public and some private institutions subject to exemptions that are necessary and consistent with the protection of public interest in a democratic society. So uh, that's the law passed. Apart from that, it seeks to foster a culture of transparency and accountability in public affairs and also to provide for uh, related matters. It was first drafted in 1999, reviewed in 2003, 2005, 2007, presented to Parliament in 2010, brought back to the sixth Parliament, but could not be passed to the expiration of that Parliament on January 6, 2016. Yesterday, it got passed, and uh, that was after the last amendment to the bill was proposed by NPP member for Okankwe Central, uh, which changed the implementation ministry of the bill from the AG and the Minister of Justice to the Ministry of Information. It, will be, it is recalled that Parliament had earlier approved a motion which would delay the implementation of the bill to the next financial year in January 2020. That's a story. Paris, let me start with you. Uh, your ministry is now in, in implementing uh, the bill. <coughs> Already, uh, some have said kudos to Parliament, uh, the coalition that uh, moved for the bill to be passed. Uh, the issue is that they have done well. For the ministry, where are we going with this? Well, thank you very much, Brian. Good morning to you, my colleague here, and to the cherished viewers of the TV3 uh, this morning. I believe that uh, we have to be grateful to the Lord Almighty. Uh, we definitely have to be grateful to uh, His Excellency, the President of the Republic, Nana Dodankwa Kufuado. We have to be grateful to the Speaker and members of Parliament uh, for the seventh I mean, Parliament of the Fourth Republic uh, and all those who 
in diverse ways uh, also played their part uh, in ensuring that at long last the battle has ended and the match talked about RTI uh, has been passed. Uh, this is a testimonial to this dispensation's commitment to one, keeping its promises. Mm -hmm. And Bright, you are well aware that under this dispensation, uh, we are for the first time in, in, in contemporary history seeing uh, a lot of fulfillment of promises. I mean, uh, we can go through the list, take it one after the other, and you would notice that this is a president uh, that is keeping his word. Uh, he promised to uh, implement the free SHS policy, for instance, it's been done. The resuscitation of the health insurance has been done. The restoration of nursing allowances have been done. Restoration of teacher training allowances has been done. The creation of regions has been done. Uh, the passage of a lot of the uh, laws to ensure physical discipline and responsibility uh, have been done. Uh, reduction in, in taxes, as was promised, 17 taxes in all have either been abolished or reduced drastically. And so there is no doubt that uh, His Excellency the President and, and his government are uh, delivering on their promises. We also promised uh, that within the first then uh, the of His Excellency the President, we were going to ensure that the right to information bill that has been lying uh, uh, in Parliament for uh, almost two decades, almost 20 years, will be passed and true to uh, his commitment, true to uh, our culture uh, last night or last evening, this bill was passed. Uh, Brad, it's important that we acknowledge that the current dispensation is taking some very, very bold steps in its fight against corruption. Mm -hmm. And the passage of the RTI is one of those uh, critical moves. Uh, you notice that it is this government that passed the uh, Office of the Special Prosecutor Bill, for instance, and not only in the uh, the president ensure the passage of that bill. The president proceeded to appoint a, a, a former attorney general of the opposition NDC uh, to be the special prosecutor. That is a bold and emphatic statement from somebody who is leading from the front as far as the fight against corruption is concerned. There were lots of people on his side who felt that, no, uh, you were literally uh, buying a gun and putting it in the arm, in, in the hands of your of your opponent, but the president uh, mm -hmm. uh, kept his his faith with his promise and and insisted that no, let us do right by this country, and we all know, uh, Mr. Martin Amidu, uh, at a point he earned for himself the accolade of the, uh, 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 you can recall, I mean, in his fight. Uh, in the NDC, You're talking about citizen, uh, vigilante. citizen vigilante, and we all know his pedigree as far as uh, fighting corruption is concerned. And it took a bold president, a decisive president, somebody who uh, is sure that he is incorruptible, not in one or the other life, as compared to others who will ask when I was president or when I wasn't president. I mean, the man knows that, and I mean, people have tried it severally, but he has never stuck. Again, this president, uh, in again protecting the public press, fighting corruption, and devolving power to the citizenry, is also taking bold steps to ensure the election of MMDCs. I mean, uh, you, you, if you are in the executive and you had that power mm -hmm. to appoint DCEs, their loyalty was going to come uh, directly to you. But you have a president who is saying that I want to give that out to the ordinary people of this country. It suggests to you what kind of person, what kind of individual, what his philosophy, his leadership philosophy is. And so I am quite excited that uh, this has happened. I am even much more uh, excited that it is happening during this time when the man's commitment, the leader, I mean, his commitment 
to devolving power to the ordinary people, his commitment to fighting corruption is clearly manifest on every single allegation, be it trumped up, be it uh, unfounded, whatever you may want to describe it. His Excellency's attitude is that let us take it through the proper processes of investigation. And I think that the RTI has come uh, better late than never. Uh, it has been sitting down there and governments came and, and left. I am told that uh, at one time, uh, during the tenure of the former president, Mr. Mahama, he was, he was delivering a presentation, and I can check for you. And he made the point that he was not too sure at what stage uh, the, the RTI was in parliament. And I thought that, well, uh, it, that was suggestive of a certain lack of interest uh, in the matter. Uh, but, I mean, uh, what is past is past. Uh, we have to confront the current and the future. And so we're happy that it's been passed. For us, at the Ministry of Inform Information, you are right, we are now the implementing ministry. Uh, we have this year to, s to set out uh, the implementation framework uh, and the preparatory works that have to uh, go into its implementation next year. Uh, the minister, Honorable Kujo Nkrumah, is offering leadership. And lest I forget, we also need to commend that gentleman. Uh, he has played uh, very, very critical roles uh, in uh, the passage of this bill. Uh, the Minister of Information, I mean, and other uh, ministers of state as well. Uh, he is offering leadership. Even before the bill was passed yesterday, I know that he had already begun uh, engagements with uh, stakeholders with a view to uh, establishing a roadmap uh, towards implementation. And so we stand ready and prepared right. at the Ministry of Information to uh, follow the leadership of the Honorable Minister Kujo Nkrumah to ensure that by next year, the effective implementation date, all the preparatory works uh, and all the institutional arrangements that have to be put in place uh, so that we can fully and effectively implement this law uh, will, will be done. And so we are, we, are, we are ready and willing okay, to I'm do grateful just that. For Sammy, so uh, uh, the Minister of Information says uh, this is a, f uh, a, a feather in the cap of a government in the fight against corruption, the passage of the RTI bill. Right, thank you very much. Uh, let me say good morning to our cherished viewers, good morning to my brother, Pius, and yourself. Um, I think it's, it will be unhealthy for me to start on that you know, cheap political goal scoring. Uh, notes that my brother um, addressed this issue from. But let me say mm. that the passage of the RTI law is a feather in the cap for Ghana as a nation. This is a very significant collective achievement of all of us as a country. And I would like to commend the seventh parliament, both sides of the house, the majority and the minority, for passing this law. Because, right, the objective is to deepen our democratic process. This law is supposed to operationalize the right of citizens to information guaranteed under the 1992 Constitution. It is supposed to promote and foster a culture of transparency and accountability. And so to that extent is a very important law. It is taking us a long time to get to where we are today. It's been a long journey with so many challenges. And that is why I would have wished that my brother would not have gone on the trajectory he just you know, proceeded on. Like you rightly pointed out when you were reading the story, this law was drafted in 1999 under the ex-WAL NDC administration of Flight Lieutenant Jerry John Rollins. In 1999, the President Kofu administration came and improved on it. In 2003, it was reviewed. In 2005, it was reviewed. In 2007, it was reviewed under President Kofu, improving on it because there were so many contentious issues, issues about the scope of the law, and the scope of the access it was giving us as citizens, the scope of exemptions and all that, 
that we were struggling as a nation to reach consensus on. I'm not sure that Pius can say that because the law was not passed under President Kofo, in spite of his contributions, in improving the draft he came to meet, he was not committed to it. That is a very cheap, you know, partisan, unhealthy position to take on such an important national matter. When we came into office in 2009, the government of Professor Mills ensured that the bill was presented to Parliament. And so it, it, the bill was first presented to Parliament in 2010. It has taken us a process. You need to appreciate the history of this law. We had challenges with it. Back and forth, we had to do amendments and all that. In fact, it, it, under the seat parliament, it underwent, you know, about 100 amendments just to improve it. And as a matter of fact, by December 2016, we were set, the seat parliament was ready to pass it. And the then speaker, Joe Elja, who attempted to do so, the then minority, our brothers in the MPP, who are today in the majority, opposed it. Right, you are aware of that. This is clear evidence of that. And that is why I would have wished that he had not proceeded on this, you know, tangent. Minority threatens walkouts over passage of RTI bill. This story is dated 21st December 2016. When we concluded all the processes and attempted to pass it in December 2016, they attempted to boycott the process. You understand? They didn't support us like we have supported them now. But we came into a position a new government came, the processes were already there, the law had been fine-tuned over the years. We worked together with them. We in the minority worked together with them in the majority to get to where we are today. And that is why yesterday, when the Minister of Information, Kojo Opon Kroma, moved the motion, the motion was seconded by our ranking member on the Constitutional and Legal Affairs Committee, Honorable Inu Safusi, a member of parliament for Tamale Central. So there's a joint thing by parliament. Take the cheap NDC MPP politics out. If you want to claim credit for fulfilled promises, fulfill your one district, one factory promise, which is today a white elephant. Fulfill that and take credit from that. Fulfill your one village, one dam promise, which has today turned into one, one village, one pond, where you have redefined dams to mean dugouts and ponds. Fulfill that. Fulfill your $1 million promise to constituencies. Fulfill your promise to pay contractors. Fulfill your promise to build 350 secondary schools from scratch. Fulfill your promise to transform Ghana within 18 months and make Ghana like paradise. You have failed. You have flattered to deceive on all your flagship promises. So please, leave this issue out. And by very important, let us commend the coalition you know, for, the, uh, R, for the RTI. Because they've done a human's job. You see, that, that, this was a national collective effort. That has, brought, that, that has achieved this. And we need to celebrate that. But you see, I am not happy about a few things. And I would have wished that it was done in a different way. Number one, why are we deferring implementation of this law to 2020? Why must we wait for 12 months before we implement this law? Uh, we are told that certain measures would have to be put in place and all that. But I still think that 12 months is too long a time. And we could have made the, made the process shorter. Mm. That is, for me, my first worry. When they proposed to defer it for a year, we opposed it in parliament. They had a majority, so they had their way. That's it. But I would have wished it was done differently. Secondly, there were some amendments that we had wanted to, you know, uh, effect. Yesterday, the minority leader raised the issue of clause 13 of the law, which places a fetter on access to information, bordering on deliberations, recommendations, and opinions, and so on. Because we felt, you know, just like the um, coalition for the RTI, mm. that that does not conform with human rights standards and international best practices. Because you see, in law, there is a crime of attempt. There is a crime of preparation. If I have reasonable grounds to suspect that a public officer or a state agency is engaged in you know, a criminal venture. I must not necessarily wait for that decision to be taken before I write to request for information. If I have slightest indication that this is happening, I should be able to request for information. Unfortunately, this law does not permit that. The bill that. says allow whatever is happening to go. Exactly. So that's what the Th that is one exemption. Mm -hmm. And so that is why we must also hasten slowly as we celebrate this milestone. We need to get the law as passed Analyze it and see whether it is indeed fit for purpose. Analyze the scope of the exemptions. 
what access we have been given to see whether it will indeed facilitate access to information and enhance the culture of transparency and accountability, which is the overriding you know, consideration or rationale behind this law. But you see, also in celebrating, right, we must be mindful of the fact that the mere passage of laws does not in itself achieve anything. We've passed so many laws in this country, and yet today they are redundant. We passed ROPA. We celebrated it. Today it has not been enforced. We passed the special prosecutor's you know, law. We've all seen how redundant that agency has been. And one of the reasons why it became redundant was that even after the law was passed, we had to wait for months before we got the enabling ally. And so I think that one of the things we should focus on now is to get the enabling ally for this law. This is the substantive law. Mm -hmm. But you need a procedural, you know, enabling legislative instrument to give true meaning to it for its implementation. That must be done and that must be done, you know, immediately. And did I hear my brother talk about um, this being evidence of this government's commitment to the fight against corruption? <laughs> you see, Pius of all people should not be speaking this way. This Akufu Aduba Wumia government right is a monument of corruption. They have failed to protect the public purse like they promised us. They rode on the back of an anti-corruption campaign into office. Today, they've made corruption an attractive venture that everybody doubles in corruption and gets away with it. And he's a typical example. If this government was committed to the fight against corruption, Payos should not be Deputy Minister of Information Why? because we know of the Australian visa racketeering scandal Do you understand? and but how you have was, swept was, that was, under the he carpet. Was, he, was, he was exonerated. From then, no, the, that was yeah, the, but, normal, but, but, the, the, the normal clearance by the, clear, the, the clearing agents, mm. you know, where to, to date, who has been held accountable for that scandal? We know that over 60 Ghanaians were taken to Australia under the guise of, you know, they being media men when they were not. They were deported. Government said it was investigating the matter. It asked the deputy minister of that ministry, Pius, who superintended over the whole thing, to step aside for, for a period of time. Who has been held responsible? Tell us. The National Lotteries Authority scandal, where 11 contracts in one day were awarded to the sister-in-law of the chief executive officer in flagrant disregard of our pro public procurement law. What wrap, has been done? Wrap up for me. Let the me Ghana Maritime Authority up. scandal, where over 10 billion old Ghana cities was spent on renovating a two-bedroom house. The, the, the sheer wastage and the dissipation of the public, what has been done to that? The number 12, you know, expose involving the president himself. Today you've seen Anas Arimi Yawanas you know, writing a petition calling for signatories to put sufficient pressure to bear on this government to at least prosecute Kwesinya Antechi. That again has been swept under the carpet. You are covering corruption. You are making corruption attractive. The premix for diversion, under which Ghana lost a whopping 22 million Ghana cities. What have you done? So don't preach about corruption. You okay. are the worst government when it comes to the fight against corruption. Yeah, right. so, so in conclusion, me, uh, in conclusion, uh, yes, conclude, yeah, yeah. So, so in conclusion, this it's a significant milestone. It's a mm. significant achievement for all of us as a country. We commend the seventh parliament. We commend the coalition for RTI, for the RTI, which championed, you know, the introduction of this law. Let's commend ourselves, but let's get the enabling ally in place. And let us also be mindful of the fact that at the end of the day, we must be committed to respecting the dictates of the law and to giving, you know, true meaning and to give true meaning to the objects behind it. Either than that, you know, it will not I'm yield grateful. the needed results. I'm grateful. Well, well, right. So you just, can react. Just, he he raises issues with implementation, deferring the ally, and then the will, issues will, about. So you can you react. This, but what I, I do not believe that there was anything that I said that uh, was uh, a cheap political rant. Mm. Uh, if I noticed anything cheap and political, it is the refusal on the part of uh, some persons uh, to see the progress that is happening and to even describe the one district, one factory as a white elephant. That is cheap, that's political. Because as I speak to you now, it is a matter of public record that within the record two years, there are at least 79 different one district, one factory facilities at different stages of operation. If you go to Boone today, that municipality has at least three new factories 
we used to import tiles into this country. Now there is a tile making factory under the 1D1F that employs at least 1,000 people. It's there lying there for anybody who, to see, unless you want to be blind politically to these developments. Right, if you go to the, the, the Insawan prison, there is a toilet room making facility in the prisons under the 1D1F that is making toilet rolls. And if I told you the amount of monies that we used to import toilet rolls into this country, today we have cited the factory within the prisons. The advantage, another advantage is that the prisoners are now able to work and make some income and when they do come out of prison, they don't go back to their old ways because now there's some capital to start on. This is a, a, a thinking government. You can go to Gomua, you see the Casa de Ropa, you go to Elmina, and I can go on and on and on. So if you decide in the, in the light of all these glaring evidences of work under the 1D1F, mm -hmm. then you are the one who are being cheap and being political. Again, we are talking about these acts, rightly, being drafted in 1999. We are in 2019. Right. And I'm saying to you that it takes a committed government to ensure passage of the bill. There cannot be any doubt about that. <laughs> when the NDC, and he speaks about something he read, that in, in, in December 2016, the story that he wrote, he read, was published on the 1st of December 2016. We were going to go to the polls on the 7th of December. That, 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 that speaks that speaks of commitment of correction, to... Uh, the date no, is please, 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 if I may finish. I'm if I may finish. That speaks to the commitment of the NDC, who has been in power for eight years, okay? And, and a few days before or after they lost an election, they want to pass uh, uh, the bill. That speaks to their commitment. And the, the listening public, the viewing public, are the but better did, did judges. You, but did you, but did I'm you saying to you that I'm saying to you the final day of, to, of, of parliament. But I'm did, saying to you, did, did the minority I, oppose the parliament? No, I'm saying to you that look, the NDC was in majority at the time. Today, right. today, today, there was opposition from what they claim or what they are characterizing as opposition. Within that time, there was opposition. To, last night, okay. he just mentioned the point that there were things they were not comfortable with, but because we were committed. We had to pass a law. Look, this law, it can stay in Parliament ad infinitum because every day somebody would have something to say about it. What, when we talk about commitment, is the decision to grab the bull by the horn and decide that well, we will pass it nonetheless and we will improve upon it as we pro proceed. And that is commitment. And they were in, they were in the majority at the time. Mm -hmm. And if they truly and really were committed, they could have passed it like we passed it. Even though okay. some of them, including my brother here, who said that they had some problems with it, still had problems with it, even yesterday. But we still passed it. Now, okay. did I hear my brother say, pay contractors? Mm -hmm. I thought they said no construction was happening under the MPP. So, which contractors are they asking us we should pay? Government doesn't own contractors. But I'm saying that <laughs> I thought they said we were not doing any construction. No, but the key but is if, uh, government no, doesn't so own are they, So, no, are they no. now admitting that the construction that they claim they did, after all the monies that they claim they borrowed for those constructions, we are the ones who are still paying for it? Are okay. they now admitting to that? Now, we are talking about deferred implementation. Mm. Look, this is one gentleman who is talking from both sides of his mouth. He says in one breath that he doesn't understand why we are not implementing the law immediately. But he says that we should... He said the should, period, the but, but I'm saying that, I'm saying that, that he says shot. that, but we have not even started consultations on the LI, the enabling law that will uh, 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 make implementation effective. Mm. Okay? There have to be structures that has to be put in. So the gentleman says that we should implement the law immediately. Mm -hmm. Then he says that, oh, we should, we should do the, the, L, the ally. Those are the reasons that in the wisdom of the lawmakers, they thought that we are now even at the end of the first quarter anyways. And so we need to do the budgeting and, 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 and put up the structure. So I do not find anything wrong with, the 12 with making... It's um, not even... It, I'm okay. saying that this law will become effective right. in 2020. Now, lastly... I'll take a now break and come back to now you. Now, lastly, oh. now lastly right. I think that, I mean, this thing about uh, uh, the personalizations, we should run away from it. And uh, you sound quite ignorant and uh, you lack knowledge on the Australian matter. And you are a lawyer. You must redefine corruption. Mm. And you must establish to me what I gained. Because if you, if you are alleged to have been involved in corruption, 
my layman's understanding is that you have used official you have used official powers for your personal gain. Mm. So I mean, there is not one individual in this country, either related to me or who claims he gave me money to travel to Australia. We'll go on with the conversation, but John will take some questions, uh, comments from you, yes, and then we'll get some reactions. Ah, thank you very much. Uh, at long last, it's heated in here, and uh, we we'll check out Tilapia first. It says the collapsed Great Coat Tower probe. That uh, someone on the on the said, I'm a short commission, okay, and he says I see political doom sort lanties behind the collapse of the pylon. Interest one there. And uh, I'm sure this one has also caught your attention. She says, from India with the magic trick. Uh, three officials, four officials actually, and the city is rising. Uh, yes, I can't see the black, the pupil in the eye, but uh, the city is, is rising. Pius, you are laughing. <laughs> Tilapia certainly is a bad boy, isn't it? Um, okay, and uh, we start off. Good morning, Bright. Hope the signed RTI bill will not just be in our books because we are always good at getting new laws without proper implementation. Era Madenta, you said, well, is yet to receive presidential accent to make it a full act. The right to information bill will change any, won't change anything. The bill taking a cue from the Constitution prohibits the sharing of information deemed injurious to public safety and morality. What constitutes public safety and morality is subject to, in the eye of a public officer and in charge, as is the case may be, but not from the perspective of the seeker of the, uh, information. This bill is only good for the egos of proponents. A.U. Farouk in Tamale says, Good morning. <clears throat> the passage of the RTI bill is not a new... It's not news to us. Previous governments started a process ahead of today. While well, it's been passed anyway, give credit where it's due. Walanyo Nakwitia says the fearful RTI bill, which the NDC was not able to pass into law in the entire eight years, is finally passed into law. Thumbs up to the Kofado government. My question here, it's been passed. So what next? Are our people ready to give out the right information? How effective is it going to be? Boss, we have the special prosecutor's bill passed because, but it's now a toothless uh, bulldog, that's what you say, and I can't bark even to bite. We need commitment and honest leaders, not bills. Dr. Abedi Kwada Soeke, Big Shoes. Good morning, champion host. Thank you. Uh, thank God Parliament has finally passed the right information bill into law, which has been in Parliament for close to two decades, despite calls from the media and civil society groups for its passage. We thank President Akufuado for the change we voted for. Uh, thank you very much. Parliament passes RTI bill. This is a huge achievement for democracy and anti-corruption campaign. We can now hold those two, uh, those who are chopping uh, one money, nyafu nyafu, uh, accountable. Ghana is the winner here. Long live Ghana. Abladi Fiekuma Zongo in Takrade. And Mugi's Mohammed in Tamil says, Good morning, Bright and Johnny. The RTI bill is just another bill passed. I refuse uh, with all my strength to get excited over just another bill passed. The MPP should be commended for the passage of the law. The passage tells us that the MPP party is committed to law and order in the fight against corruption and the general development of the country. Kudos to Nanado and the MPP Abdul Malik in Tamil. Good morning, Bright. I woke up this morning very happy, but the Deputy Information Minister destroyed his happiness by playing partisan politics with an important national issue. The passage of the RTI bill. Very sad. Sharif Tamale in Central. Alasan Wanaiwa says, Ghanaians have to applaud this government led by His Excellency Nana Kufuado for, a bo for both steps in passing the RTI bill to enhance effective accessibility of information needed to, uh, for public consumption. My regards to the President. Uh, thank you very much. Right, I'll leave it here. Right, Johnny, thank you too. He'll be back with more of your comments. Let me, let, let's uh, get your reaction. Uh, a few rebuttals to some of their sessions, my brother made. Uh, first of all, let me tell Pius that I have nothing personal against him. But he must understand that he is a public officer. And for that matter, will be held so accountable you can, you can say anything about in the line with the laws of this without, country. Without recourse to the fact. He I mean, you said has been making allegations against former President Mahama. So he's paid back that. And other people in this country. So he's paid back that. Allegations which border on corruption and all that. And so we will not make a sacred cow out of him. We will hold his feet to the fire of accountability and to the I very don't standards I don't mind that at all, he set for us. You, you understand? That at all. The point yeah. is that, Pius, were you the deputy minister of sports yes, when that Australian visa racket yes, scandal happened that, on that? Yes, you were. Make me a visa. Were you the that head? Did not Please. Make me were you the head? Consular officer. Hold on. That did not make were me a consular officer. Were you the head of the Australian you know, Olympic game 
committee or not. You I were was, the head. I was. And I was responsible we, for the we team know the contingent. That over I was 60 not, I was not responsible for masquerading as journalists. And journalists. But I was not taken to Australia and were deported into the country. But the committee was not responsible When they came into the country, please, can you allow me? When you were speaking, I was here. I was quiet. Please, please. I beg you. Can we have the reaction? Okay, so yes, that we'll just allow exactly. If there's exactly. For you so, there. so, so they went to Australia. They were deported when they came into this country. They told us of how they paid bribes to whom? officials to at whom? the Ministry of Sports and so on. Till date, That's not even true. the people who perpetrated that fraud have not been found. Nobody has been found, has been punished. And you are saying that as a man who had ultimate responsibility for that event, you should not be held accountable. Well, this is a very then second. This is a very second. Hold on, hold on. So, 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 so please, 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 right, allow me. So, I that insist the, the that you are complicit in that matter. A, 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 a what committee? Pilot. It is a normal, okay. you know, right. so, so, so let's white Russian Sammy, committee so let's that move we have on. seen. Let's move. He is still guilty. Either yes, that, Sammy, that he should Sammy, tell other people well, who were, Sammy, you know, Sammy, culpable Sammy, for that. Sammy, but Sammy, let me move. No, no, no. Again, he makes the point. Again, he makes the point. He makes the point. 